So logos and icons, and mostly we'll, we'll be talking about icon, well, logos today, not icons, and I'll share my screen with you then. Here we go, and let's start the show, or slideshow at least. And you can probably see my screen now. Yes. Good. Yep. Okay. So there are like thousands, if not millions, of logos in the world right now. And when you are going to some app like Canva, for instance, it will give you also um, logo templates. And on some cases, on some apps and some websites, you can download uh, almost ready-made logos, or that would seem like ready-made, but they are not actually saying anything. They are just shapes that don't uh, have any meaning. So a good logo usually does have some uh, meaning with its uh, forms and shapes. and. Uh, and pictures, if if there are pictures. And yeah, as you can see, there are three, uh, several different kinds of logos. Some, uh, as you can see from this picture, some of the logos are totally typographical or sometimes uh, calligraphic, like Guitar Hero here, or uh, and some of them have are uh, just uh, icons that don't uh, actually depict anything, like this one here. And some are derived from uh, an image uh, or derived from a from a letter or letter shape and some are combining them so there are like here the green giant has an actual green giant and then has this text green giant hmm. or you can have the image elements uh, inside the uh, the text in various ways like here, the Xerox lo logo in the middle. It's uh, well, it's an X, but there's also something that is happening here that is uh, breaking it up. So usually there's some thought uh, behind any logo, so that it's it's not just some random shapes and forms. Okay, so logos and icons, as you probably know, have been around for a long time, like uh, millennia. People have used uh, these kinds of simple marks to identify something. I don't know how long cattle has been uh, marked uh, with brands, but it's probably also for millennia, quite a cruel practice, but uh, probably also practical. So these are actual uh, branding marks. So that's where the name branding comes from, or the the, the word. Uh, but of course, well, these are from the 1800s, and also uh, logos as such as brand marks have been in use since the 1800s, and 19th century. But before that, there were other kinds of um, marks for brands. For instance, here, these uh, bread stamps that ancient Roman bakers used because the ovens were communal and many bakers used to go there 
cities coming in oven, so they had to uh, know which bread was which. And also it was a way of uh, knowing which uh, bread came from like a good baker and which didn't. And some sorts of bread stamps are still in use in some countries and cultures. Which is interesting, I think. Then, uh, well, I could have found many sorts of mummy tattoo images, but most of them were kind of gross. So I thought uh, this would not make anybody nauseous or uh, anything. Uh, but yeah, this is from some Egyptian mummy from like 4,000 years ago, maybe. And she had these uh, tattoo marks, uh, which were mostly in ancient Egypt. I think they were like for fending off uh, evil spirits. And the Iceman Ötzi, if you have heard of him, guy who was found in the um, in the mountains, frozen, and uh, who had been apparently murdered. Anyway, he. He had also several kinds of tattoos, many of them. Well, people used to believe that uh, you had to have tattoos for health reasons in certain uh, places of your body. And then, of course, people have taken tattoos to show which tribe or other kind of group they belong to. So as a way of expressing identity. And it's kind of nice that tattoos have uh, become like something that is mainstream in the West, at least, again. Because it's a, such an old and uh, traditional uh, way of visual design. Okay, uh, so how do logos change during the years? Let's see a couple of examples. Uh, so usually uh, when times change, also technology changes. And some of the, these logo examples show that, I think, uh, that, that you have had different ways of printing, different ways where you can uh, put your logo. For instance, if you have a car logo, you, you, you will make it out of metal and put it on top of, or in the front of your car or on the, the back end of your car, whatever you like, or whatever uh, suits your style. And you print it on your product. So as printing technology and also uh, image manipulation technology has become more and more digital. So the logos are reflecting that change as well in, uh, in some ways or many ways, I think. For instance, it was easier to print everything in black and white in, uh, in the old days than after the Second World War, uh, color printing became uh, more uh, relevant and more prevalent. And uh, okay, when when you look at this shell logo, what, what do you think of the evolution? Has it become better, or is one of those your favorite? It's become a lot more simplistic and like free, it's yes. easier to remember. Uh -huh. It's very much more minimalistic, that's true. Minimalism ha has become like very fashionable uh, in the uh, last few decades. That's true. What else?
the colors, um, they're much more noticeable. They're meant to pop out and catch your eye, which is really important for the kind of company that they are that, you know, tired people driving at night and they're running out of gas. They need to have a sign that's very easy to see mm. on the highway. Yeah. Uh, in addition to having this on highways, they also have the, uh, the logo on the other products, which means uh, if they have uh, bottles of uh, oil uh, or gas or, some, or other kinds of uh, well, car related products. So it's not just at, on the, at the sideways or at the uh, highways. Anyway. Well, do you think it was a good decision to uh, take the the word shell out of the shell and put it underneath the uh, the logo? Yeah, because then the shape is more marketable when you want to put it on like caps and stuff. You mm -hmm. can just put the you don't have to put the text. Mm -hmm. Not always. Uh, what about Senya? Yeah, I think it's because of the um, readability, maybe, that it's better mm -hmm. that it's under it, I'd yeah, say. Probably. Uh, there's a, because there's a lot of stuff going on in these 55 and 61 versions. Uh, uh, and the original logos are more like, uh, like photos that were like photocopied in some way. Then this one from 1930 is more of an illustration already than a photo. And then it becomes uh, more simple at each uh, iteration. And in the 99 logo, there's the, like, even the letters have disappeared because they think that everybody recognizes uh, the logo without the letters, which is probably true. Okay, let's stay with the cars for a while. Uh, I chose these to start with these because they are quite old, like Mercedes uh, starts from 1902. So there's a history of uh, over like over 120 years with these. Okay, so what do you think? Why has the minimalism uh, become less with the years? We are back to details. Why is that? Um, I'm not sure, but usually Mercedes is like upper class people kind of car a little bit. So maybe that to mm -hmm. like cater those people a little bit. Yes. So that you can see. Oh, the yes, sorry. Who to make it? it a bit more fancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, of course, on the cars, it's been like this shiny logo anyway. Uh, because it's made of metal, like shiny metal. But but here you you can see the shininess even better. They also have the because Mercedes has like the two badges. They have the one that's on the like stick on the front of the hood, and then they have the badge mm -hmm. that's on the hood. So they have like the 1933 logo. I think is the one on the hood. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they are still using those laurel leaves. Okay. Yeah, on the on the hood one. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Uh, well, that's not always the case. Sometimes it's just a, a simple one on the hood as well, but it kind of depends on the model of the car. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so, do you know what laurel leaves usually mean? By the way, what's the symbolism symbolism of laurels? Victory. Victory, yes. Yeah, I would guess something in that that way as well. 
that's also something that Julius Caesar wore after his victory. So it's some like a, a victory and the ruler. And uh, I read somewhere that these uh, this three pointed star uh, refers to uh, air, uh, water, and earth. So that Mercedes would be everywhere in, in that sense. And they do make uh, uh, ships also and, and airplanes. And <laughs> okay, that was strange. Um, yeah, sorry, it was in the chat. I just okay. told that everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, there were like, anyway, there were three old guys or three men who put together this company. And Mercedes was the name of the daughter of one of the men. And uh, there's also this sort of uh, story behind it that they were fighting over something, these three guys, and then the girl came and uh, said something that they made peace, and then all three put their canes on the table. And that's where these three uh, points of the star came from. But I think that's just a legend that they invented. But the daughter Mercedes was real anyway. Um, over to Lego. So which of these is your personal, personal favorite? Or which one don't you like at all? I know, yes. My favorite, I think, is the newest one. Uh -huh. It's so clear. Yeah. What I noticed was that my favorite with many of these logos was the one that I knew when I was a child, which means that people get emotionally attached to the logo forms that they see, also the colors, when, when they are children. And they get, I think maybe we are some, we get this sort of imprint of the world when we are children. And logos, well, well, as most of us are city people, they become part of our world. So the way the world should look like is the way that it looked when we were kids, including how the logos look like. And that's why I like the Lego 1973 to 98 uh, uh, logo the most. Because that that one I remember uh, from my childhood. So actually, never have like I've always liked Legos, but I've never liked mm -hmm. the logo. I've always mm -hmm. hated it, and I think <laughs> it would be better if they dropped the yellow entirely and just went with red and white. Uh -huh. Well, they used to have uh, just uh, red, black, and white through the nineteen fifties. Yeah, but the shape looks dumb. <laughs> the shape looks dumb. Yes, it looks. Uh, it, there's a lot of like calligraphical in in the letters that they look kind of hand drawn, and they have kept that hand drawn look through the years until now. I think the yellow in the logo represents like the yellow characters in their um, uh, in the Legos because they're yellow like the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that must be why there's yellow. And I think that's cool. And I do prefer the one before the latest one because mm -hmm. uh, the O is less smashed. It looks like a zero on the latest one and the and the mm -hmm. 1973 one it looks actually like an o mm -hmm. and in the pre 
even previous one from 65 to 72, there's uh, the uh, like hand drawn O letter still, but uh, there's a kind of 3D look to the O. Uh, in general, I think there are too many elements here in the 65 to 72. Uh, there's the word system, and then there's this sort of flag with all kinds of colors, probably representing Lego colors. But uh, look at the 1950s to 54, what, what kind of things would you say this logo is for, this one? To me, it looks like a car. Yeah, uh, I was about to say the same, that it looks like a car logo or like some, some sort of like mechanical company or something. Yeah. And the uh, 46 I got, one. I got, a, I got a vibe like they sold plastic wristwatches or something. <laughs> Could be. Well, um, they do. Yeah, they do, yes. They sell all kinds of things these days. And these ones from 46 and 36, uh, they look like clothing companies, mostly, to me. But it also is saying something about how we look at things at, in this day and age that we see a lot of clothing company logos that look like the Lego logo from 46, maybe. Okay. But here the, they have had like this uh, period from 53 to 55 where the logo was really simple. It was really minimalistic uh, compared to the ones that came after it. So, it's interesting to see that the minimalism <clears throat> is not always um, uh, increasing with the ages. Okay, cars again, Volkswagen. What do you say of the, the earliest logo? 1999. Very German. Very German. Quite but... messy. <laughs> they have reminds me of windmills. <laughs> They have Nazis, good Wi Fi. That's what I think. They have Wi Fi. <laughs> that's, that's good. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I keep. Wasn't like Volkswagen like a Nazi, a Nazi. started? Yes, um, and that's why it's. Uh, yeah, um, the first it's one kind is of like a that. Plastica. Yeah. And also the, the next one, uh, 39 to 45, brings somehow some sort of war vibes to me. Or maybe, well, it could be a, like a political uh, movement logo. Okay, but why do you think uh, the minimalism that was there until 2000 has uh, become less and less and they are to more shininess? My guess would be kind of the same as with the Mercedes and then also to be maybe a bit more coherent with with what's actually on the car. Mm -hmm. It probably also has to do with technology. Yes, although they could do that kind of logos between 1995 and 2000 as well. Uh, actually, designers were quite in love of all kinds of uh, sh shiny stuff when Photoshop came along. But yes, I think also that they are trying to raise their prestige into like more upper class uh, cars that, are, that cost more for the logo. Then let's have an uh, Asian uh, company. Uh, yeah, in um, uh, one year yes, uh, course, we had somebody from Korea and they, uh, well, he uh, told us that the uh, Samsung name comes from Sanxing, which means 
it's like this uh, Korean way of saying the uh, Chinese words that mean three stars. And in actual Chinese, it's san, san keshing, but in uh, when Koreans speak uh, this kind of Chinese, then it's san, san, Samsung. So the K has been dropped away and it's just the Sanxing. And if you look uh, closely to the first logo, then you can also see the uh, pictograms for Sun, Three, and Xing, the uh, star, when you look closely. Okay, so what does the first logo from 38 to 96 uh, resemble? Like, what, like what comes into your mind? looks like an ad for a course to how to make origamis. <laughs> well, uh, maybe it's because of the uh, Asian letters. Uh, it's more like what's under the three stars. It's, it looks like, oh, that's a wheat. It, it's a wheat, yes. No, not origami. OK, Senya, what, what do you say? I mean, it kind of reminds me of like old propaganda posters mm -hmm. a little bit but yeah mm -hmm. definitely wouldn't think about like phones with that one what about soup like ready-made soup and ready-made meal um maybe if the army like eats it then probably could be yeah, that first logo definitely makes me hungry <laughs> now that you said it it kind of gives me like army rations like 10 vibes <laughs> mm -hmm. uh so because some Samsung used to be like a company that made ready-made meals. That was where they started from. So uh, the first logo is actually for soup. And then they branched out you know, a little bit like the uh, Finnish Nokia, which made rubber boots at first. Uh, and they, I think they still make uh, rubber boots and they are quite good at it. Then they started making televisions and then, uh, then Nokia uh, uh, took over and they started making mobile phones and you know probably the rest, how it went and how it uh, ended also. But Nokia is still around as you can see in Tampere, there's the Nokia arena at least. And they are into networks right now. And uh, okay, Samsung has had these three stars uh, in various variations. Can you see where the star is, or where the stars are in the newest logo? They are still there. Is it from the white, actually, like from the A and the M's and the N, maybe? Like okay. the cut look off the, parts. Look at the A. Yeah. Like here you have the uh, uh, the star, uh, what's the, what's Sakara in English, by the way? Yeah. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Sakara. Point of a star? Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. but that's what I was thinking, like the A, M and N. Is there more? Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the 7993 logo, you, you see the, the shape of the star here, and it's kind of the same shape than here in the uh, in the A, A. Like usually, an A has a uh, uh, has a horizontal part, and it's missing now. And also here, the your right step with the M and Ns, there are also these star-like. That might be part yeah, of the star. It's kind of sort of there, but mm. it's, it's not obvious at all. I, I never yes. got that impression that there was a star. And they don't want it to be obvious. It's just uh, for people who know. Like his, in the A, A, there's the first star, in the M, there's the second star, and in the N, there's the third star. So three stars still. So they tried to include the stars uh, in the logo. So that's why they called the phones Samsung Galaxy. Mm -hmm. 
Three Stars Galaxy. Three Star Galaxy, yeah. Uh, but for me, uh, well, as a child of the 1970s and 80s, for me, somehow, this, these Samsung logos are the right ones. Also, these uh, two here, over here. But uh, in a way, I do like the, the newest, uh, very, uh, Minimalistic logo as well. But yeah, what you said about the uh, Lego logo, about that, uh, how we feel nostalgic for the one that was our childhood. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we were talking in the chat about this Samsung logo, and it seems like um, quite um, Many of us didn't even realize that it had been updated after the 2005 because we remember the 1993 mm -hmm. to yeah. 2005 one. Exactly. <laughs> okay, everybody knows IKEA. I find it uh, interesting also that they had the uh, like apostrophe over the A to help uh, the Swedes uh, pronounce it right, Ikea. But then they uh, took the apostrophe away in 1967, so they made it more minimalistic. So the changes have been more uh, subtle here, uh, well, at least after 67. But what would you say, what are the biggest changes? And, what do you think of them? Well, I think like the two first look like the main product is the meatballs, and then they go <laughs> go for the furniture after that. Uh, yeah, actually, they started with the uh, furniture, not the meatballs. But do, um, what do you think of the changes? Uh, between 83 and 2019. Do you see what, what they are? Yeah, they're kind of smart changes. First of all, the colors are more uh, accentuated, if that's the correct term. And the and the lettering, there's like the A, and like each letter doesn't have the small like curves. I don't I think I think- Yeah, that's... sans serif. I think that's yeah. the smart but, in case someone wants to print uh, the logo and the printer is not that very high quality, so it's easy to just have like straight up the. Actually, the serifs are still there if you look, but uh, closely, but they are very much smaller than in the previous version. They've also become more <laughs> defensive of their copyright, it seems, because the registered trademark R is inside the logo now and not outside mm -hmm. it. Yeah. It also takes a lot less space that way when the uh, trademark is inside. Actually, probably it was like, because uh, if you center the logo when the R is outside, it probably never centered correctly. So they mm -hmm. probably did it in, from practical reasons for that. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, you also notice that the logo is not as wide. The, the letters are, more tightly inside the oval. I think the negative space is also better with the closer together letters like that, like the white, that there's a bit too much yellow in the old one, but this one is like perfect. Mm. Again, for me, uh, the the 83 version uh, works better, but I might be partial or my eyes might be partial. That. I think it's kind of funny that they're showing a colored logo where all of their products have it printed in black and white in just the name and for the R on like everything, every box. So it's kind of useless not to have it as a, like a complete logo. Mm -hmm. What do these two colors uh, signify, by the way? What's the symbolism of the Sweden? <laughs> Sweden! Yes, Sweden. Yeah, that's what, what I was thinking that they maybe wanted to 
uh, underline that they are Swedish brand and since IKEA is now worldwide. Yeah, well, IKEA has been uh, worldwide since the 1970s. It just came uh, very late to Finland because Finnish uh, furniture companies uh, had a, this very uh, well war against IKEA coming to Finland. So that's why Finns were unaware of how uh, popular IKEA was everywhere in the world. But yes, the Finnish furniture companies finally lost the war after uh, battling it for 50 years. Uh, okay, let's go to, uh, let's not go to lunch yet, but let's talk about uh, McDonald's. Okay, what do you think of this uh, evolution? It has its up and downs. It does, yes. Um, sorry about the quality of the graphic of the picture. I couldn't find a better one, which had all, all of the uh, logos. I really like the 2000 one. 2000 one? Why? I don't know. Like, there's something about it, like cause I, maybe the black border, because I really like that effect on most mm -hmm. things because it makes it very readable. Mm -hmm. For me, oh, so it's a smiley face. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a smiley face, but maybe it's a bit too uh, depictive. Maybe it's not abstract enough, or maybe it wasn't abstract for it, enough for them. What about the uh, simple yellow M they have now, right now without the red? Yeah, I. I actually really like the current one because it's easier on the eyes and the shade of yellow is a bit more optimistic than earlier shades and mm -hmm. just gives it a just a um I don't have a word for it but it just feels less heavy mm -hmm. pressure yeah so because McDonald's has a reputation of uh, having really heavy and fat fattening food. So maybe that's why they wanted to have a really uh, light and, uh, and friendly logo. So, so logos are designed to uh, make us think of things, uh, but not always directly, but uh, like at the back of our heads. So it's more like a, a feeling that we get from seeing a logo than uh, like a rational thought that goes uh, around it. Um, my personal non-favorite is the 92 version, by the way. Like there's too much of everything there. Like, hey, we, we can use Photoshop. Okay, and yeah, they've uh, dropped the McDonald's word from the actual uh, logo itself in 2000, which is also an interesting thing. Uh, okay, Coca-Cola, also an iconic uh, evolution. Which is your favorite and which is your non-favorite? I, I just love, I, I love the nose thing, how it's like they tried to do something different in 1985 and then immediately changed their mind. <laughs> oh, Coke, that's my favorite. Uh, they had the uh, Coke in, uh, in quite many, uh, well, not bottles, but in the uh, in the cans. I'm really loving the 1890 one. There's mm -hmm. something really elegant about it. It just 
that's so, the this is yeah. per personally speaking to me i really, really do appreciate it that's the time when they said that they still had cocaine in it that must be why <laughs> uh, no cocaine was uh, like this um uh, new uh, fashionable drug that was around those days I do kind of appreciate that they've gone back to like the original, like the 1905 font. It's pretty much the same mm -hmm. that it's now. That's kind of cool. I appreciate it from some companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the 1940 and 2007 versions are uh, almost identical. So they kind of work in this day and age. But 2003 has Again, too much bling. I have a theory because Senya asked why red. Uh, it's probably because uh, they like originally had printed it with red ink, so it's mm -hmm. stuck because Coke is such a big brand. So it's probably just because of convenience, like they used to use red ink to print their labels, and because mm -hmm. Coke is so popular, it's just stayed that way. Nice, probably. Uh, so. Also note that through the uh, 1950s until 2003, the uh, letters were white shapes on a uh, like a red uh, background, and now they've uh, turned them around. So they were negative pear shapes. Okay, Google. <clears throat> What do you say? Oh my gosh, I'm just seeing my child in the first line. <laughs> okay. Do you have any version imprinted on your mind, like which should be the only or the right one? I mean, I guess for me, it's the 2010 one that's mm -hmm. ingrained into my mind. Yes. Although it wasn't around for that long, just three years. I'm having the same thing as with the Samsung logo that Tina said that I didn't even realize that there's a difference between 2010 mm -hmm. and 2013. Like mm -hmm. this is the first time I'm realizing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, everyone has their own preferences, of course. I just, I really like the 2013 font. There's it's like, I don't know what it is. I just like it. Yeah, they took the serifs away in 2015. What, what do you think of that? Made it simpler. Yeah, it's good. Also, uh, if you look at the letters, the, the shapes in the 2015 version are uh, like, they are of an even uh, strength everywhere. It's but, easier to read and easier to recognize even, I think. Hmm. We're soon going to talk about colors. And uh, if you look at these colors, they are like basic, basic ones, like they have four basic colors in a tetragradic uh, uh, way. But uh, the newest version is just a G. Although I think well, they do actually use both the G and Google. And sometimes in their uh, Google search, they, as you know, they make the uh, logo go wild in all kinds of directions, which I like actually. Yes. I heard that uh, when the telephones and computers were first becoming popular, they were trying to make every logo and every this kind of thing uh, look more 3D and popped up because people weren't used to screens. And now that mm -hmm. they're getting used to them, they are turning flat back again. 
So like when the phones were first coming around, they were oh, trying yeah. to make everything look like real buttons. So oh, yeah. everything is shadow and stuff. Yes, but uh, there's also a comeback now of shadows uh, shapes because if you take minimalism too far, that you don't shadow anything, then you also lose some uh, critical things that uh, sometimes your uh, app is not easier to use, but harder to use if there is no shading at all. So there's a, like in visual design, there has been this less is more uh, saying for more than a century since the German Bauhaus movement. But now people are sometimes starting to say that more is more. That most of the time less is more, but sometimes more is more. Uh, so these are things that also change with the times. So the current trend for minimalism will probably not last for long because it has this extreme minimalism has lasted for what, 10, 15 years. So people are, are getting a little bit tired of looking at, at the very minimalist stuff. But that's uh, up to uh, debate if this is happening or not. And we'll see better in maybe five years where this is going. But just to warn you, because you will be in working life in, uh, well, if you're not already, then uh, at the latest in four or five years. Okay. Are, you expect, are you expecting us to get jobs? Of course, sure. And that's why I'm saying this. Uh, we're going to talk about how a visual designer should uh, expect for, uh, getting a job in this situation where uh, AI is uh, taking care uh, of much of visual design, which you are probably aware of that, uh, for instance, there are websites uh, creation programs like uh, it was this one called Wix, where you, the AI, uh, if you just uh, put all the stuff that you want to have in the uh, and on the website, then the AI makes some sort of automatic version of your web website in like five minutes or so or less. And then you can tweak it. But, uh, and when you go to Canva, you can, or maybe PowerPoint, you can find lots and lots of uh, nice looking uh, templates. And, it, and PowerPoint will give you these design suggestions, which uh, a couple of years ago, well, you needed to have a, an actual designer to do that. But not everybody can um, actually use them, those templates. And so, Anyway, this is a long discussion. Let's not have it now, but later. Uh, okay, let's go into colors. Mm. Okay, so here's one graphic that I found, which uh, shows a couple of logos that have some uh, like basic color on them, like red or orange, yellow, green, blue, or purple, and have. Uh, the thing with colors is that we all have some thoughts about colors and most of them are like uh, non-rational. We think of them in emotional ways. We think of them as symbolical uh, way, ways, uh, but not all of the symbolical meanings are the ones that people actually have. Like, uh, okay, for red, yes, the intense, energetic, youthful, bold, and strength. But what this uh, forgets is that red is also the color of blood, which uh, which makes it also potentially uh, an aggressive color, especially if you use red together with black. Then you get all of these 
kinds of meanings of war, for instance, or fighting. And of course, there's a, each country and culture has some um, like history of where certain colors have been used. Uh, I put as an example, these Asian countries, China, especially, where white is the color of mourning and color of death, uh, which is different from most European countries again. And the like gold and yellow uh, means uh, imperial or, uh, or emperor. And uh, yeah, the black color uh, refers to all, kind, all officials and maybe also police. So if you're making a, let's say, a, a new logo or menus for, for a Chinese restaurant, then they might not appreciate you using uh, everything black in, in the menu because they think of it differently than we do. Um, yeah, it's a like basic sin with designers uh, wanting to use a, either a lot of black or a lot of white and then making the letters uh, tiny because there's in the uh, beautiful empty space, which means that older people can't like, or people over 40 can't uh, read the letters at all. But we'll talk about that in typography uh, more. Uh, so, uh, so there might be different associations uh, with fins, for instance, with the colors, uh, blue and white than in other cultures because blue and white are uh, the colors of our national flag and we have uh, in Finnish schools, we, uh, we've been uh, like imprinted with these uh, colors many times. Then, uh, but not all, not in all cultures, the colors of the flag are uh, so positive, uh, positively loaded, and even in Finland, uh, the blue and white uh, becomes more the the colors of certain political movements, which I find a little bit disturbing. That that some movements are taking over some colors in a way. Uh, anyway, um, any thoughts on this before we go on? Uh, for me, that purple that's used in Yahoo logo, et cetera, is like the worst color. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. It, doesn't give me like a good feeling when I look at it. it doesn't invoke anything like I don't want to use Yahoo I don't like uh what's it called the chocolate the British people eat that, that bad chocolate that it's the same purple Cadbury Cadbury yeah M maybe but, I just associated with things uh, I don't like it's also the uh, exact same almost exact same color than uh Tumi. I do dislike it too. <laughs> it's not as bad because it's slightly darker, the slightly. Tuni one. But uh, yeah, it has been criticized, the Tuni color, like why purple. <laughs> also, the Tuni logo, um, I didn't actually see the robot in there at first. Or it, it's supposed to be a person, but I always see, see a robot there. Like, but yeah. <laughs> do you see a person or, or a robot in the Tumi logo? Or do you see it? A weird man, I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah, a weird but simplistic face. Yeah. But never weird liked bold. it. Weird, bold, bold guy. Um, 
Okay, let's go to uh, color combinations. You will learn about color combinations in Thomas uh, classes in the principles course. Uh, has Thomas already uh, talked about them? Primary complementary. Yeah, that was our task for last mm -hmm. week's lesson. Okay, then we can uh, almost skip over these. You should know them uh, already. Uh, just remember not to write complementary with an I. <laughs> like complementary. That means something that is um, that is for free or something that is given as a gift. Complementary. Then complementary is like something that is opposite opposite you or opposing, or not opposing, but or complementing. Uh, anyway, I found uh, this web link on uh, Canva, which I found quite nice, where you can make your own color combinations quite easily. There's also a way of doing it in um, Illustrator. Okay, here, you know probably these from Thomas lessons also, complementary, analogous, triadic, and so on. So let's get into logo shapes. And by the way, I think we'll have to have a short lesson after the lunch break. I'm not going to uh, let you go that easily uh, because I want to show you a couple of things in Illustrator. But uh, yeah, just to. Uh, so we should be ready by 11, and then let's have a lunch break, and then let's have a short, short Illustrator lesson before you can start doing the day tasks. Anyway, so often when you have like this, like a uh, very iconic logo, then it it has like a basic geometric shape that it's based on. Like you can see from these examples, uh, there's the triangle, for instance, in, uh, over here that has been broken. That's quite uh, important, actually, that you have these uh, gaps. Also here, we, uh, you have the uh, basic ball or, or just a circle shape, which has been uh, also broken. So there's this uh, 3D uh, illusion in it. Then we have rectangles, we have more circles, well, the Twitter logo is basically a bird, but it has been uh, simplified into these uh, circular shapes and half circles. And there are many logos where there's a circle and then there's stuff happening inside. Or here you have basically a square and a triangle which have been combined. And there's a, the letter A. But most of uh, this is happening in our head. We, uh, there are actually only three shapes here, but the A is uh, something that our uh, mind is making there. Okay, so uh, also you can see that all of these work fine also in black and white, and we can uh, actually recognize them. But achieving this uh, sort of simplicity and clarity is not always that easy. Usually, especially if you start out with a logo that depicts something, then the first versions are quite uh, illustration-like, and then you have to go a long way simplifying it into a logo out of the illustration. So. Simplification is one of the uh, like most important uh, principles. Then, then again, there are some designers 
to have this sort of inner simplicity of forms and shapes. And they they make it look make look like uh, like they are riding a bike so like really smoothly. They can do these very smooth looking uh, shapes. So if you're one of them, then uh, you're lucky, but this can be uh, learned. Okay, so what other methods there are than uh, the simplification? Well, we've already talked a little bit about the negative shapes and negative spaces. So you have to know how to uh, look out for those. Has Tuomo, by the way, talked about negative uh, spaces already? No. Okay. He will, I'm sure. Then we have the uh, method of cutting a shape or replicating it. And anyway, you have to be really attentive to the small details when you do lo logos, but also the big form. So the big shape and the small details, those have to be uh, quite as important to you when you're making a logo. Then the symmetry and asymmetry. Uh, often logos are symmetrical, but then often they also uh, break that symmetry somehow. Or they uh, set out asymmetrical from, from the start. Uh, then optical illusions, I already mentioned that in uh, this slide. There are many optical illusions happening here. And then you can use shapes in front or behind each other, uh, making this, so, so it's part of the optical illusion that you make, make it look like 3D a little bit. So I've uh, raised the, the negative shape and negative space as a, a slide of its own. So, Anyway, empty space should always be active in a, a logo. And sometimes you can do tricks with the neg negative shapes, like in these examples. So for instance, um, in the Hope for African Children, do you see the uh, like trick, trick of the eye? That's happening there. It's not just Africa, but what else is there? Two people. Two people, exactly. Um, in the NBC logo, the peacock's uh, head and uh, its body are a negative uh, shape. And in FedEx, in the FedEx logo, can you see the arrow? I recently I learned that it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see so it. Yeah, never mind. It's between the E and X, the arrow. And the same kind of thing happens in the USA logo. Okay. So if you're, when you're making a logo, always ask yourself if your negative spaces are interesting looking or not, or if they are boring looking. And when you make negative shapes uh, actively, like in these logos, then you get this aha thing from, from the one who, who looks at it. And uh, that's kind of a thing that uh, logo designers are very often looking for that you want to make uh, your your viewers think that they are smart, which they are, of course. But you want to make them feel even smarter because they have uh, noticed your trick there. Okay, then. Uh, well, I said this already in, in the beginning that uh, what kind of uh, combinations a logo can have. 
And here are some examples of just, uh, well, not just typographical logos, but typographical logos. Um, and yeah, here I wanted to add that a logo can also be uh, have an audio component. Can you think of any uh, any of those that that have a small sort of music or other audio with them? Well, at least the Netflix ones. Mm -hmm. Netflix has the do do. Yes, exactly. HBO has a has a sound and uh, when you open up a Macintosh computer, there's the the, uh, the C chord coming. They, they brought it back to uh, the new update MacBooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, C, C major uh, chord, I think. Uh, and I was thinking if logos have like um, olfactory or smell components to them. At least car logos have uh, haptic components, like when you touch a Mercedes uh, uh, logo on, on the car, it feels a certain way. But can you think of logos that would smell or taste? Well, absolute does. <laughs> Certainly. It's vodka. I think my local garbage company has a smell. <laughs> okay. I was just yeah. thinking about like Fatser chocolate or like Paulik uh -huh. Juhlamokka or something, but okay, Joey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe Nutella, I don't know. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, there's by the way, a joke I have to tell here that you said Nutella, but um, there's a German chocolate uh, company called Kinder, Kinder, and it's quite iconic also here in Finland. People love Kinder uh, Easter eggs and other uh, chocolates from Kinder, but there's one uh, product that they haven't uh, put in the Finnish market which is quite popular in Germany, I think. It's uh, called, uh, uh, what or was it Kinder? Could it, uh, anyway, it's called uh, Nussini, which is, uh, which has nuts in them. Yes, I think it's from Kinder, Kinder Nussini. Do you understand what, that sense why this is not, uh, <laughs> is it the Kinder Eggs? No, it's not Kinder Eggs, but the name itself is not. Yeah, not we good. <laughs> get it. <laughs> it's a bit like the uh, most popular uh, mineral water in uh, Sweden, which is called Loka. And Loka means uh, like mud in uh, Finland, in Finnish. Nusini means, uh, well, you might know what it means. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, over to icons. So uh, if you go to any, if you Google up icons or free icons, you can find thousands and probably millions of ready-made icons. So, uh, is there any sense of making your icons yourself as a designer? I'd say absolutely. Maya, absolutely yes or absolutely no. Absolutely yes, because like there are so many ways to make them and 
it mm -hmm. depends on the shape language you are using in your logo and other assets. So like, for example, these icons that we have here have like very, very like uh, thin lines, etc. Mm -hmm. So it depends like if you are go to, going for bolder style and such. So the icons you use should reflect the overall shape language and visual design of your brand. Mm -hmm. However, it takes quite a lot of time to make th this many uh, icons and you could probably by uh, by searching a little bit find the that kind of style that you're looking for in the ready made icons so uh, often like an assignment for visual design is quite uh, hectic so you'll have to have something ready in uh, a couple of days so you don't have time to do your own icons but sometimes if the client wants them and if it's uh, uh, if you have the time and it's good for the product or project then uh, you should be able to make those icons yourself as well but the basically the same rules as for logos go for the icons as well but in icons usually there can be a little bit more uh, details and and of course the uh, overall function has to be really clear with an icon so that you can see right away what it is. Okay, the Comatech case, uh, a client uh, a presentation is by the way, starting at 11. Are there any people who want to uh, take part in? Pardon that. Because we could ha start our uh, lunch break now at 11, so that you can uh, go uh, listen to the Comatic people, what they want. And by the way, that's also an, a client that has um, money to pay. Okay. Anyway, so that was uh, my presentation so far. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll, before we go on uh, the uh, lunch break, I'll go we'll write down the day task, but first I stop sharing and stop recording.